Hello and welcome to Retronator Pixel Art News. I heard you like pixel art, so today we're gonna talk about The Last Night, Stranger Things, Let Them Come, and it's been a good bond because it's October and it's time for Octobit. Hello guys, how are you all? I am Retro, also known as Matei Jan, and this is the probably only pixel art show on this planet. We're going to start with a game called Darkness Revealed. Look at these pixel art shaders. It's finally a platformer that gets me interested. It happens underwater and it's offering a story about a diver that gets lost under the sea. As you can see the trailer, it gets dark pretty soon. It gives me this kind of limbo vibe of going more and more into the darkness and getting lost kind of in there. So keep a lookout for this one because it looks like it's going to be quite an adventure. Another game with really cool pixel art shader technology is The Last Night. What we got right now was a look into the making of the trailer that stole the show at E3. The video really gives us a look into the mind of the art director Tim Saray on the project. It's really something worth watching. Each scene starts with a concept art, giving the team a target to achieve in terms of mood, lighting, color and composition. Because of the lack... We're going to stay with games that use 3D graphics for a moment. The game we're talking about is Call of Saragnar, and it's an old-school 90s-like RPG that uh, if you played Betrayal at Krondor or my favorite Daggerfall, you're gonna feel right at home. I love this kind of 90s aesthetic. So yeah, check this game out. A quick shout out to a game called Project Legacy. It comes from another solo game developer on Tumblr. It's pretty cool and I really love all of the smooth battle animations. This game's just pretty and I'm um, interested what's gonna come out of the Swedish lore plus J RPG combo. Next up is a shout out to the game Obelus. Concept art is just gorgeous and the two artists on the team really are making this game just tasty to look at. Check the game out, it's gathering funds on FIG from crowdfunded games that are just gathering pledges to one that's about to come out. Tower 57 was funded on Kickstarter two years ago and it now finally has a release date, November 16. Just to remember, it's a twin stick shooter with gorgeous, gorgeous art from Cianjimo. Another game that we're gonna be able to play in the next month, it's called Boot Hill Bounties. It's the sequel to a Wild West adventure RPG, Wood Hill Heroes. Its solo developer, David Welch, kind of went silent for a little bit and just pretty this month came out with, hey, the second part is ready to be released. Yeah, good music, cowboys, trains, Wild West, what more do you want? It's time for new releases, games that came out in October that you can play right now. I already mentioned CNG Mo before, he's the artist on the game Tower 57, well he was also one of the artists, there's many others as well, on the game The Mummy Demastered, which is uh, made after the movie The Mummy. The Mummy Demastered is available at $20. From movies we go to TV shows, how about a free video game about Stranger Things? It's not like they needed to hype up the show even more, but Netflix released a mobile game for iOS and Android, which is kind of like an RPG, which has five stars all across iOS and Android, Google Play Store, so definitely check it out if you're a fan of Stranger Things. Let's stay with games that give me this creepy vibe. In the Shadows is a puzzle platformer where lights scare away shadows, so it has a really cool lighting graphics engine which it uses in good ways for its gameplay and it has this personal story kind of because it's developed by a solo developer Nicholas Tennessy so in the shadows has positive reviews so far and is available for Windows Mac and Linux at $16 this next game I've been actually playing quite some time it's called the regions of ruin and the developer sent me a key it's kind of like dwarf fortress meets Kingdom, you go out and raid and attack and build your little dwarf settlement. It's not as complex or nothing like as complex as Dwarf Fortress, but it has this nice little core loop of exploring the countryside and it's only in early access, so this is just the start of it. It's available for all platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac at $17. I have two more games for you that you can also play, but they're not out yet. However, their demos are out. A very well-known game in the indie scene called Nikra 
has finally got a demo out. It's one of the most gorgeous games and the demo is pretty short and sweet and so I'm not gonna even show you too much. Just go and play it, just take, sit down and finish it, have a good time. That's all I'm gonna say about it. One game I will talk about for a little bit longer, however, is Cynical 7. Boy, is this game super funny. It's kind of super funny, but also a little bit dark because it's a game about a game developer and it's socially awkward and tries to talk to girls with various success. There is some combat mechanics, has that kind of uh, Scott Pilgrim vibe to it, but really the brown jewel cherry pie top whatever is the dialogue and this kind of experiences that the character goes through. It's currently on Kickstarter with a very low goal of $6,000 and the thing is I'm putting it into the new release section because with the Kickstarter you also get to play the demo and I know that once you try it out you're gonna be excited about it. Cynical 7, The Misadventures of Trees, go check it out. Dun -dun -dun -dun, final thing of new releases as always, game of the month and this time it's let them come that took me a little bit let them come came out at the start of October and has really very positive reviews because the game is just smashing great it's this kind of arcade shooter sit on the left with your machine gun enemies coming in from the right and just shoot them up and the thing about the game is the waves inevitably destroy you but dying is the fun part of the game because that's when you get more and more cash and then buy upgrades which make you easier to defeat the wave next time. Five dollars, game of the month, let them come, did you let them come? All right, next up, music feature. <laughs> DJ Cutman is the creator of the show This Week in Chiptune, which is one of the best things ever if you like Chiptune, because he mixes together all of the great music that comes out. This week in Chiptune is coming to an end. It's gonna end at show 200. Right now, the last one was 197, but DJ Cutman will go on with uh, new projects. One of them is actually Radio Cutman, which is a constantly online YouTube live stream with cool pixel art graphics, GIFs looping in the background, while lo-fi hip-hop video game beats made by him and two other artists keep on blasting. It's really a nice thing to just tune in to put in the background. Yeah, it plays really groovy. And with that said, it's time for Random Bits. First up in Random Bits of News is a sequel to the film Memoirs of a Spectrum Addict. It's in its very last days on Kickstarter with three days to go as I record. It's probably way less now and very short to the end. I really hope this can make it also. I'm gonna be featured in the movie and there's me because I do a lot of pixel art for the ZX Spectrum. So help Andy make this film a reality. You will make me very, very, very happy. Next up is a big shout out to Adventure Advocate. In particular, I wanna give a shout out to their YouTube channel. One series that they're doing is a cut of the Monkey Island series where instead of a normal let's play, they just make what's called a movie cut. Hi, my name's Guybrush Threepwood and I wanna be a pirate. And you can see the whole gameplay of Monkey Island 1 in half an hour. The second part is also half an hour. The third one, which didn't even have pixel art graphics anymore, pretty much looks just like an animated movie because it's done in that kind of style. It's a 15 minute one and now they've also started doing the fourth one. So definitely check those out if you need some very funny entertainment. Two weeks in the future on November 18th, Minecon is happening. And this time it's actually called Minecon Earth because it's just gonna happen in your browser. It's gonna be a 90 minute long live show. If you like voxels and square cube things, Minecraft, you know what I'm talking about. Minecon Earth, November 18th for you. Isn't that nice? Now we can all go to Minecraft convention. Next up is pixel art and it's October. What better month because in October we get to have Octobit, so pixel art section full of cool stuff this month. Let's cue it right in. The guy who came up with 
Octobeat was Bruno Moraes. Octobeat 2017 had a cute and a not cute list, so you could choose between either of them. And it was really cool because you could follow his teams, I and mean, a lot of other people also did just stuff on their own. It's just a cool challenge if you're able to draw every day. I'm also gonna write an article about it for Eternator magazine, so be on the lookout for that. And another cool thing that came out of Octobit is the image with the very most like 733 at the moment is these cool watercolors. It was made by Sai and N. They actually started a Kickstarter for a whole book of all the watercolor images in this series. It's already been funded. Uh, there's plenty of days to go if this is an art style that you love. Give it a go. You can get a digital or a real version. And if Octobit wouldn't be enough to make October great for pixel art, one thing that stormed Twitter was the hashtag artist on Twitter. It was so cool that I had to do a whole article about it in Retronator magazine because who wants to look at the artworks in these little small squares? Why not watch them big, widescreen, full screen, nicely organized? There, there was so much art that I had to break down all of the artists in a couple of categories such as illustration and fine art and game art and people did also do concept art and 3D and voxels. There's over a hundred artists featured so when you find your art style that you love just follow all the people in there. The thing about artists on Twitter was that you can only include four images in your tweet so pretty much everyone just put their best work out so all you get to see is really just the best of the best of the Twitter scene at least of everyone that participated in this whole ordeal. If you are one of these artists or you want to become one you're gonna love this final next section called do it yourself DIY is next. We're going to start with voxels instead of pixels actually. Vox VR just came out on Steam and it's useful for your HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. It's a tool to make voxel art in virtual reality. So if you're into voxel art, check out Vox VR. It's out for Windows at $15. A legendary thread on pixelation.org called the non-exhaustive restriction guide. What we just got is an updated section for the NES, so this is your one-stop resource for hardware limitations. Actually, I will give it the second stop, which was the game called Steel Assault made a guide, which is also very, very nice. So especially if you're into the NES, definitely check these two resources out. Another resource that is very useful, it's not free, but it's very, very well worth it, $9 or more, is the Pixel Logic Guide, chapter seven just came out it's on the topic of cleanup and i've had all of the previous one already before it it has close to 200 pages so far really filled with the, all of you need to know about pixel art since we're talking about books a real hidden gem is a book called learning pixel art by max Airview. it's only a dollar learning pixel art is a real tome of knowledge for advanced pixel artists i would even say it goes into things like anti-lazing and littering but it does it on a very kind of high level in depth for once you already know about these topics but you really want to go deeper in it really tries to give you the understanding of why you make these certain decisions so it's really really something good if you want to bring your pixel art to a higher level and yeah it's just a, it's a dollar definitely recommend everyone give it a read last up it's my article on different graphical projections which is also going to be a very technical article and this one is free because it's supported by all of the lovely people on patreon that are contributing to my campaign you can also become one i just finished the first part of the article in the series it's this big picture overview of all of the different parallel and perspective projections we're gonna dive deeper into what these terms mean into the next part but what is really the kind of unique thing about this uh, article is that all of the concepts are going to be demonstrated through graphics from old video games i think this is going to be uh, one really fun way to learn about how to draw properly and i really have to give a shout out to a site called super adventures in gaming for contributing all of these screenshots. Almost all of them from this article are coming from the Super Adventures in Gaming site. And if you love my Retronator Magazine articles for the fact that I illustrate everything with images, 
you will love super adventures in gaming of course as always link to their site in the description just as much as uh, everything else and that's it that's our show if you want to support the show i'm on, on patreon i post updates about pixel art scene also developing my video game pixel art academy for learning how to draw uh, thank you for being in the show and i will see you next time bye bye